Hello everyone, my name is Paolo Amaro, and today I will be doing a decklist showcase and tournament report from my top four at the Portland League Cup that happened this past weekend. I used the same 60 card list as Alec Mc Alex McNeil at the Portland Regional where he ended up in 7th place. Alex is a good friend of mine and he's been on a bit of a tear recently. Um, he got that top 8 and he as well um, finished in day 2 of Worlds last year. So without further ado, I'll get right into the list. So first up, we've got our Garbodor line, which is probably the best part of this deck. Um, starting out, we have three three Tool Drop Trubbish. I never used Tool Drop throughout this tournament, but is it is the optimal Trubbish for this deck most of the time. We have one Noble Victories Garbage Collection Trubbish. This is so that versus Meldex and Zorak Control, um, it allows you to bring back just, just one card if your opponent's, like, just getting rid of everything. Although, in a cup meta, I would consider just playing the fourth tool drop Trubbish, or really any 70 HP one. Uh, Acid Spray is also, like, perfectly fine to play. Um, there, there are many times in a tournament that Acid Spray might come up more often than um, tool drop might. But, uh, I faced Greninja in two matches in, in my win winning in. It was, it was round 3 winning in, because it was 5 rounds and it put me at 3-0, and as well in uh, top 8, and so this Trubbish was actually really scary to have down because of how easy it is to just kill with a giant water shuriken. And getting into the Garbodor line, obviously Trash Lynch, we know it, we love it, or hate it, depending on how much you've played with it. I love it, I, I love playing Garbodor. Um, and then of course Toxin. I think everyone kind of hates this card. Glad to see it go from the format. Um, this is, there's a Toxin split. I think it was mostly just for fun. I don't. I haven't asked Alex exactly why he did this split. Maybe so he has a diversity of attacks. Um, I still haven't been able to say off offensive bomb, but I I feel like in in games with this deck, I consider charging up these ability lock garbs maybe more than I should. Next up, we've got our. Drampa GX, everyone's favorite grandpa, Dragon Grandpa to be specific. I love my floppy boy. Um, he has three great attacks, Righteous Edge and Berserk and Big Wheel. Um, I used all three of these plenty in this <clears throat> throughout this tournament. The one you'll be using the most for sure is Righteous Edge. Um, I mean, he's just a great attacker. He's great against Zorak. He's great against Seismitoad. He's, he's great against the Mirror. Basically, there's so much special energy in Expanded that the, this card is just so great to have out, and <clears throat> if you're able to get a DCE and a Psychic down, uh, Berserk just deals out a ton of damage, and it's a huge threat. I feel like, um, more than anything, Drompa GX is a threat more than, uh, well, Berserk is more of a threat than um, anything else on Drompa GX. You don't actually use it, but your opponent has to consider it, because... Um, as soon as they leave it wide open for, for a turn, or if they put something, if they damage a Garbodor, for example, and you, you can Guzma and Berserk the next turn, they always have to have it in mind. So this is obviously a very great card. We also have three Tapu Lele GX. Um, I mean, every everyone knows what this card does. It needs no inter introduction. Um, Energy Drive is very good in this deck because uh, it runs so slowly that you're able to um, just energy drive in, into the things while you ability lock, and that's that can be enough pretty often. A lot of decks don't really want to or need to ever use energy drive, but it's pretty big in this deck. We've also got one Oracorio. Uh, I'll just lay out the rest of the, the tech Pokemon here. We've got uh, one Oracorio, one Giratina promo, one Latios, and one Sudowoodo. I'll reorder this actually so that I can do attackers and more ability, bench sitters. So Oracorio is, is really nice uh, against Night March and Vespaquin especially, um, but also Revelation Dance is a great attack versus um, Buzzwool decks and other fighting decks because there is a... Um, when, when things are psychic weak, Revelation Dance does, does 60, and with a choice band it does 120. Um, it's kind of the same concept with Breakthrough on Latios, although it's more useful just against tiny basics that you get to just drop 30s on while you kind of set up your garbs in the back. 
Um, this is really nice. I played this in um, in my garb decks in standard last year. That even though a lot of people excluded it or chose Tapu Koko, um, the, I I played this because uh, I I thought our, the Buzzwell matchup wasn't actually as great as it was last year, and I think this is this is still a great card to have. Um, Giratina promo. It's mainly for Trev, but there was actually no Trevenant at this tournament. Um, so it, but I did face again two Greninjas so this was huge in that matchup it, 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 I wouldn't have won all of my games against it if I didn't have the Tina promo. Um, additionally we have one Suda Wuda which is obviously great against Zorark uh, it, it makes it so they if they blow your garb then they still can't Skyfield um, and it's just very very good uh, against pretty much everything it's like benches are so full right now that Suda Wuda is pretty essential in this deck Moving on to supporters, we have 3 Professor Sycamore, 3 N, 1 Acerola, 1 Guzma, 1 Chorus, 1 Teammates, and 1 Bridget. This is a really standard supporter line. I feel like I don't have actually that much to say. Sycamore is amazing, N's amazing, Guzma's amazing. Um, Acerola, I kind of questioned it a bit more than I should have, I guess, before the tournament, but with VS Seeker and just with uh, Parallel City against Zorak as well, Acerola can really secure games. Um, Bridget, you obviously need almost always go for this turn one if you have a backup supporter or another Ultra Ball in your hand, um, just to set up all your trubbishes. Teammates is great for this deck because if your Pokemon, say your Pokemon gets knocked out, um, you get to charge up another attacker immediately and, for example, get a Guard Block or a Parallel down. Pretty much, your your deck is such a toolbox that teammates is amazing to see the cards in your box that make it make it so good. Um, lastly there's the Colrus, obviously great great draw, um, great for when you don't want to dump your hand and great. Moving on to our item count we have 4 VS Seeker, 2 Ultra Ball, 2 Mysterious Treasure, 4 Floatstone, 2 Choice Band, 2 Muscle Band, 1 Super Rod, 1 Rescue Stretcher, 1 Field Blower, 1 Dowsing Machine, and then 3 Parallel City. First up we have VS Seeker. You play 4 just because, I mean, supporters and Expanded are so broken, and you can just reuse them. You also have Laylist to search them out so you're not worried about, um, say, like, buzz Buzzless omit VS Seeker a lot right now just because uh, it sucks to have VS Seeker in your hand but no supporter, but with so much Laylist, so many just good draw cards in your deck, you don't really need to worry about that in here. Uh, we also have a 2-2 split of Ultra Bolt and Mysterious Treasure. I've tested it with 4 Treasure, I've tre tested it with uh, 3 Treasure, 1 Ultra Ball, um, and then the 2-2 split I think is ideal because you really need to get your draws out early on. I felt like I draw drew Ultra Ball way more than I drew Mysterious Treasure throughout this tournament, but maybe that's because, I don't know, just variance in that tournament. Either way, I, th I think this is definitely the ideal uh, ball split. So we've got four Floatstone. Floatstone's a great card. I mean, even when decks didn't have Garbodor, they would run it when it was legal. Um, that's still the c case in Expanded. I mean, and when you have a card like Garbodor, Floatstone's just perfect for it. Um, there's not much else to say. Next up we have a 2-2 split of Choice Band Muscle Band. I've actually never played with this split before, and it was amazing. Uh, it's great on Drampa for um, kind of weaker Pokemon. I faced Vespaquin, and so it was, it was really great against that to be able to knock off an energy in two shot. Um, it was good on a Lele to energy drive them as well. Um, it's just really good against the weaker Pokemon, and, and it allows a deck that otherwise doesn't excel in kind of small poke to really push out damage uh, in the early game. Um, additionally, the two choice band, obviously very, very good. Um, lets you hit, hit your numbers with Garb, with um, with Drampa, with pretty much everything in the deck. I mean, it's it's just one of the most essential cards in the format right now. Next are the one of trainers. We have one Super Rod, one Rescue Stretcher. This list is only running four basic Psychic, so you really need it in a you really need to be able to recover your energy with some sort of item card, obviously Super Rod's an obvious choice, and you end up discarding a lot of stuff like Garbodor and, um, you know, various the various uh, support Pokemon that you have, um, and so the Stretcher is good for that. Um, additionally, we have the one Field Blower, 
just a, I mean, Field Blower is just a good card. And then Dowsing Machine is great in this deck because it lets you get back your Parallel, um, and it lets you get back all of your, your items that are also so powerful in this deck. It, it lets you also get, get like, for example, a fifth float stone or uh, something similar, which allows you to keep your guard block active. It's just such a powerful card. Um, and the deck doesn't need computer search, which is really the only other option there. Um, last up, we have three parallel city. Um, this is also one of the best cards in the deck. I mean, like, ben forcing your opponent to three bench Pokemon is disgusting. And even being able to discard your own Leylas um, in the late game if you only have one one prize on the bench otherwise, I mean this is this is just such a powerful card. Um, it's so limiting to any deck, and like any deck facing you has to consider it when they're playing. Um, it can force a suboptimal play. Say they um, on turn one they have to drop a second Lele and uh, to play around parallel the next turn, and then you just end them, and suddenly they're out of Lele. That, that's that's kind of what happens against this deck, and it's it's just very, very powerful. Finally, we have the energy line. Very basic. Four DCE, four Psychic, one Rainbow. This has been standard for a while in this deck, just because it's... I mean, you can't go lower on any of these counts, but also, you don't need any higher. Um, the one Rainbow is just to activate Berserk when you need to. Um, I mean, I guess you could uh, rock throw with Pseudo Wuda, but I have never done that in this deck. I have done it in Buzzwool, though, in desperate situations. And otherwise, there would be no other reason to run the rainbow. So yeah, that's that's the list, and on to a tournament report. So on to the tournament report. This was the first Portland Cup and first expanded event since Portland Regionals, so I didn't really know what to expect going in. It's kind of why I chose Drumpa Garb. It's a very safe play. I thought there might be a lot of Blacephalon, there might be a lot of Trevenant, I thought there might be a lot of Archies. Um, what showed up was kind of all over the place, there was a lot of, there was, well, there were a few Greninja, it was, I think it was a group of people that came with Greninja. Um, there were a couple of Zoro Control actually, uh, which I didn't entirely expect, but the players that were playing it, I, like, if you told me they were playing Zoro Control beforehand, I would have been like, oh yeah, of course. Um, and there, I think the most played deck was Archie, but it was only like three people. This was about a 20 person cup or so. Um, and so in my first round I faced Zorak, Garbodor, Giratina. Um, it's been featured a couple times on the DDG channel in the past week or so. Um, and so in that match, turn one, he got a Lele for a Bridget down, and he seemed to be building a substantial star. I think he hit like two battle compressors or something like that. Um, However, on uh, early on I was able to stick a Parallel and a Garbotoxin, and it kind of forced him into a bit of a hole. He only had one Zoroark out at that point on like turn 3, um, and so I was able to build a small lead, and um, like just before I was about to start pushing it into like a very a winning position, um, he drew into Blower, and then from there he it was kind of even. Um, like, we were kind of trading blows, um, we, we were both playing smart, but eventually I, I edged, edged him in the end, um, through, like, late game, just kind of, uh, toppling him over with Trash Lance because he wasn't able to conserve items when he did have his, um, his abilities, just because he had to blow or he had to drop choice bands, he had to do all of, all of the necessary stuff to be able to beat, like, what I was, what I was bringing on, um, and so I just, I ended up winning with Trash Lange, uh, even though it was a close game. Round two, I faced Vespaquin, and uh, I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it actually was, just because I had Oricorio. Um, however, I had a lot of really awkward draws. I even got the turn two Garbodor, um, and I also went first. So I really thought I, I had it locked up at that point, but he kept on like getting back into the game because... Uh, his turn one, he got a ton of Pokemon in the discard, and on turn two, he... I think he knocked out a GX, I think I started a Drompa, so that was bad. Um, and I, I was drawing pretty suboptimally. I wasn't able to find Trash Lynch, I think, until, like, really late game. Um, but by then, I was using Oricorio. I ended up, um, getting a bit lucky to finish the game, because he had prized both of his Zep Strika. Um, and so he benched a Blitzel on turn one, and was never able to... Um, discard it, and I ended up winning on uh, by taking three prizes with Oricorio, 
uh, when he had exactly 15 Pokemon in the discard with, um, he benched a Combi on the last turn, which was definitely a misplay on, in my opinion, because he only had two prizes left. Um, and he had an Eevee on the bench as well, so he would have been able to evolve that Eevee into a Flareon anyway, so he did not need to bench that Combi at all. Um, and so, uh, if he, if he hadn't benched that Combi, I wouldn't have been able to win on that turn. I would have had to kill his active Vespaquin, but instead I just dropped, um, 40 on, 40 on, a. Oh, he didn't have an Eevee. No, he, he needed to drop that Combi because then I would have just knocked out his, um, Vespaquin. Uh, either way, I dropped 40 on a, um, what is it? On a Combi, a Ditto, and then 70 on the Blitzel for an exact three prizes to end the game. And finally in round three, I faced a Greninja deck. I haven't actually faced Greninja in tournaments very often, and when I've ha I have, it's just been a blowout on either end. So I knew I knew I had a good matchup against Greninja going in. I know they played a ton, play a ton of items that they really can't avoid playing, and I also play Tina promo. Um, obviously, Trash Lynch is so good against them, but um, I was worried. Say I started Drompa, they might be able to like pull two free prizes. It's definitely not an auto win, and that's what I found in, in this specific match. Um, I wasn't sure if he played only one Silent Lab, but that's all I saw the whole game, and um, we we kind of traded blows for a while. Um, I feel like it kind of went how the matchup should go, a slight favor for Garbodor. Um, I, in this match, I think I had to, uh, burn too many Parallel Cities. I had to play my Parallel City first because I had to Sycamore otherwise, and then he bumped it with Brooklet, then he bumped my second Parallel City with a Brooklet, then he bumped my third with a, uh, Silent Lab, and I had to Dowsing for the third Parallel to prevent my garb from dying to a Moonlight Slash with a Splash Energy attached. It, it was just a very difficult stadium war. Um, I ended up barely pulling that game out as well um, due to due entirely to a late game end to two um, with Garb active and I just I benched him out actually um, off of back-to-back -back trash challenges. So after winning that one I double ID'd into top cut um, against Buzzle Shrine and then Zorak Control, um, and in top 8 I faced a different Greninja, I believe again they were in the same car together or something. Um, this was actually the Greninja that, uh, I think he said he top 16 to Portland as well, so there was actually two players who top 16 to Portland at this tournament. Um, and so he, he was playing the same cards, he said he was actually going to build a different deck but he forgot everything except his Greninja deck, so I mean he ended up in top 8 but there were no top 8 points at this tournament so it kind of sucks. In game 1 I think I went first, um, it, it was a very back and forth game as well, it was very similar to the, the previous game I had played, less emphasis on the stadium war though and more on um, a general resource battle. Um, we were both kind of trading blows, I had a lot of awkward hands early on, I had 3 DCEs in the discard by turn 2, um, just because uh, turn one I had to Lele for Sycamore because my hand was really bad, um, but I I manualed a Psychic actually um, to to do that, um, and then turn two I didn't have a Psychic Energy but I had a DCE and then he uh, Enhanced Hammered it. Um, and so uh, in the previous game I got out Giratina promo actually turn one with my, my Bridget, but in this game I ended up, uh, because I didn't Bridget um, and I just didn't go for the Tina promo until late. Um, I didn't actually show the Giratina promo until uh, he had actually discarded both of his Silent Labs because he assumed I, ha I wasn't playing it, and then I, I dropped it on like one of the last turns of the game, and it, and it kind of uh, swung the momentum, um, and so that was that was a huge play. Um, yeah, he uh, it was again like Trash Lynch was the MVP in that game though. Um, I kept Garblock active as much as possible. Um, and that, that was really it. I started Latios in that game, I think I mentioned, and that was also really good for early game poke while he was um, kind of setting up. Uh, it was really useful for, um, I, I dropped 30 on a Frogadier, and then um, he had played exactly five items, uh, and so a Garbodor, or it was four items, and so a Garbodor with a Muscle Band would um, trash lynch the Greninja for a knockout, and so he really didn't have that as a venue because I had the Muscle Band down. Um, but he didn't want to burn his blower because I didn't actually have a toxin up yet. And I think his list only ran two blower. I'm pretty sure the previous one ran three. Um, and so once I got, he, he would blower my garb twice. And then once I got the third, uh, toxin, he really wouldn't have been able to, uh, um, water shuriken. 
And so it was it was just a it's a back and forth match, but ultimately it's favored for garb. So um, as long as you get the slight swings in your way, you're favored. So that was game one. Game two, um, I thought it was kind of just going to be back at the same thing. I was really worried about us um, going into sudden death, which would have been good for me, but I was still worried about just kind of like um, having to play out game three at all because because of my game one win. And he, and also, I mean, like you hear so much about Greninja being inconsistent, and then he uh, starts Froakie, he Brooklets, he, um, and then turn two, he water duplicates. And so I'm just like, okay, I guess we're back to the races. I haven't played a tournament game against Greninja that like has ended well when they they have that start. But then after that water duplicates, he draw passes. And so I am just like, okay. I And I just push my advantage. I ended up being up like 6-1 um, before he actually started really setting up. Um, he almost like, he almost came back a little bit. I don't think there was any chance of him. He would have had to make some like, crazy plays with like a blower double water shuriken my um my garbador on the bench but pretty much as soon as i set up a trash lynch and he like got as many enough items in the discard it was just over so that that was um a 2 um in top eight so moving on to top four i faced um deandre holmes who was playing his uh zork marshadow deck um marshadow delinquent it's kind of the the expanded combo that was actually also made by one of my friends um or i guess a group of my friends and and they uh brought it to utah they didn't do great but it was a, a cool fun deck that kind of made a splash um and so that it's it's similar to the glaceon exodia deck um except this one is zoric uh zoric exodia and so game one he went first he got he got the combo he got the mar shadow um and then the skyfield delinquent peaking red card and then turn two, he used Skyfield to fill up his bench and then knock out my Drompa. That was it. And and so after that, I was just like, oh wow, I don't know how I'm winning this one in three. And then but so then game two, um, I start I start well. I get my Bridget, and then um, he gets he still gets his combo, but I um, I kept a uh, Psychic Energy off of his uh, Delinquent. I had the option. Oh, I didn't. I didn't bridge it because I had the option between keeping psychic energy or um, or bridge it off of his delinquent. And so I actually discarded the bridge it because I was like, okay, he doesn't want a peeking red card away my psychic energy, but this is still a good good card to have because I had a I started dropping GX again. Um, but this time I did get a, f a few more basics down. Um, but so I actually uh, top decked the sycamore off of that as well. So. I um, I won that game just from like Trash Lynch and uh, right Righteous Edge as well. Um, then game three, he does the exact same thing. Um, I start with two Trebish. I I drop both of them. He um, and then he he actually whiffed the um, delinquent in this one. Um, and so he he peeking red cards me, and then he sees that I have four energy in hand. I just have four energy. Um, and then I draw and it's like a float stone. Um, so I pass and he knocks out my Trubbish and then I draw and it's nothing again and that's the game. So it was a bit of a disappointing end to the tournament but I'm, I'm really happy, I'm really happy to get points. I'm at 99 now. Um, I whiffed points at Portland which is a huge disappointment. I lost my last round for the uh, 40 that you get for top 128. Um, so being at 99, I definitely need a showing at Anaheim to be in contention for an invite this year especially when I'm not going to Dallas. My my next uh, planned regional is actually uh, Santa Clara out in May. So hopefully, uh, like otherwise, I, I I'm going to locals. Um, so hopefully, I'll be able to have a showing at Anaheim. Um, but yeah, that's that's the report. Uh, remember to like and subscribe to Para Flinch. Um, shout out to Alex McNeil. Shout out to all of uh, Northern California Pokemon. I came to Oregon from Northern California. Uh, shout out to or all of Oregon's Pokemon. Um, yeah, the, uh, that'll be all, all today, and I'll see you guys next time.